Is food research really that important? We'll find out in the next episode of the Food Experience Unplugged video series. Welcome to the Food Experience Unplugged video series. I'm Michelle Seidlin. Is food research really that important? To answer that question and more, we caught up with Chuck Conan, who has made great strides in overcoming illnesses through food research. Chuck, thanks so much for joining us today. You have really made great health strides. Yes, I have. I really made a big difference in my life, a major difference. So has it always been that way? What were your, what's your food experience background a little bit? Well, when, when we were kids, we were like normal kids. We ate the food that mom and dad set in front of us, and you know, the normal meat and potatoes and vegetables, you know, sure. the green vegetables, and uh, didn't give it much thought. You know, mom always said, eat your vegetables. Well, there's a good reason for it now, but at that time, I don't even think she knew what that was important, but uh, we didn't understand the importance of, of these foods, how it, played a role in our life as I know, now understand, but my uh, my uh, brothers and sisters and I, we just gotten into trouble more than we, uh, uh, with our food than anything. Uh, a cute story, my sister, she was probably barely a teenager at the time. She was uh, probably the main uh, candy-holic in our family. Oh, okay. And she got a hold of a it looked like a Hershey bar, but it was actually x lax <laughs> And mom asked all of us kids, and there was a lot of us, at least five that she that were old enough to get into it, and uh, nobody admitted to it. And of course, the problems soon worked itself out, and we found out who the one that had got it into it. Sure. But the, the, you know, we we liked our candy. We lived for Halloween. I grew up in the Halloween capital of the world, so it was it was uh, candy probably played a big part in our lives. You know, or we didn't get it all the time because there was too many of us. But you know, mm -hmm. on Halloween we could go fill up our 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 uh, sure. pillowcases or sacks full of candy, and that's when we got a lot of candy. But normally we we just ate you know regular so-called healthy menu. Um, after that, you know, we, I, I grew up and we didn't have too many health problems that I remember. We ate fairly healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have all the GMOs that we have now. Uh, I did start developing allergies. Didn't realize where they were coming from at that time, but uh, I would wear Band-Aids, you know, and you, you cut yourself when you're playing. Mm -hmm. And I'd get a poison ivy rash where the glue was on oh, the Band-Aid. Yeah. So one of my first allergies showed up. Um, at that time, we didn't know what was causing it. Um, I can wear band-aids all I want now, <laughs> but uh, sure. it, we did not understand um, the importance of food. What was the turning point for you regarding turning your health around? Well, it started way back when my mom and dad both had cancer and were dying. Uh, they didn't have long to live, either one of them. I took care of my mom until she died, and she had lung cancer, encapsulated tumor, and they hadn't even done lung surgery on her, but it, she didn't last very long. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think more than six months from the time we found out to the time she died. Oh, uh, my, my father was living in Florida, and this is when it started giving me the clue that there's something going on here. I went to the library and did some research just to see if there's anything we could do for his colon cancer. And the Brits were having success, and it was just anecdotal uh, success. It wasn't any research to back it up. But they have a strong background because of their, um, you know, discovery of what cured scurvy. Okay. You know, they had a sailor that had scurvy, and they thought it was contagious at that time, so they they marooned him on an island. And he didn't have anything to eat but grass. The chlorophyll that, that he ate has a lot of vitamin C in it. This vitamin C is what they used to cure scurvy later on, but they, after they studied them and found out that uh, vitamin C, and, and of course they got their nickname from what they used to cure scurvy, which is limes. Okay. Uh, their nickname is limeys still today. Um, with my dad, I found that they were having a lot of success with fresh fruits and vegetables. He, um, we lived in Florida at the time, a lot of access to fresh fruits and vegetables, and I told my dad what I'd read, and I said, you like all this stuff, you know, why don't you give it a try? 
Mm-hmm. And I, we worked out a little strategy because he, he would argue with me, well, I eat the same thing my dad did. I said, well, it's different. When you had it, I like his, he liked bacon, and, he, he's, and that was our first discussion or argument. He says, uh, my dad ate bacon. And I said, well, dad, it's a different bacon now. You know, they put nitrates in it now, and at that time, you know, it was salts and stuff. It was different. Mm-hmm. And um, so we worked out a strategy where he would eat fresh fruits and vegetables every other day of the week. Um, and then he could eat fresh fruits and vegetables with whatever he liked to eat. <laughs> so <laughs> fresh fruits and vegetables played a big part into his cure. Uh, he did this. He got over his colon cancer, went to the Mayo Clinic, got a clean bill of health. Um, he had surgery done at uh, first at the hospital in Florida. And they opened him up and said, oh, you're, you're, you're going to die and there's no hope for you. And of course, the... Yeah. the the doctor was trying to get him to do a gla- gallbladder surgery at the same time when he was halfway under with his anesthesia. So it was, I think it was a put on. But he um, decided to come up to Mayo Clinic and, uh, or uh, a BA hospital and have the surgery done and he lived 20 more years. Excellent. So he was, yeah. this, this happened about the age I am now and uh, he um, passed away at 88. So he didn't believe food was a cure. He'd even told my sister it was a cure. It wasn't a cure, but he didn't think he had cancer. So he went through these many years eating the fruits and vegetables, but not really equating that to the cure? He quit eating the fruits and vegetables. He, the last uh, five years of his life, he moved in with me and he wasn't on that diet. Um, I don't know if he changed when he came and lived with me from Florida or if he just dropped off of it. But it, it lasts quite a while if you do it. Um, your body will keep you healthy if you give it the right nutrients. And I think what happened with him is uh, he, didn't, he didn't equate food to healing or a medicine. You know? And, and uh, he even told my sister, who didn't believe it, and she died on the 10th of January this year. So if she, and she was probably a junk food junkie. Not only was she a ca- uh, cantaholic, mm-hmm. but she also was a junk you know, junk food. She liked the manufactured foods, and those have a lot of these poisons in it and that are very uh, toxic to your health, and research is showing this. Um, after that, that gave me the clue that there's something I could do. So tell us about your food experience journey. started um, at the VA. Um, my health was deteriorating and uh, I was getting down to where I was ready to sit down permanently in a wheelchair. And I asked the doctors what we could do about it. Is there anything I could do? Because I was doing everything I could do above and beyond what they were telling me to do, but I wasn't looking yet. And uh, at that point in time, this was the end of June of 2010, uh, and they told me, well, get used to it. That was their cure. And so they didn't have any, any uh, protocols for me to follow. The thing that I used uh, to initially start my cure was chlorophyll, and I used it, um, a green um, alfalfa type juice in a pill form because it was convenient. found that chlorophyll works really good to, to detox mercury, which is one of the things I was looking for, but it also I found the Japanese had done some research uh, on uh, rats, and they found that uh, the rats, if they fed them chlorophyll after they gave them dioxin, which is Agent Orange that I was poisoned with in Vietnam and we're being poisoned with now in our uh, GMO foods. Uh, it detoxes uh, dioxin through chelation. And what chelation is, is kind of like a, it's like a, the chlorophyll is like a magnet. It picks up poisons and it, you flush it out of your body when you urinate. So I Studied it for about a week and found, you know, what any, you know, what what the side effects would be, and uh, there, there was only one side effect, and it was far wor- uh, less uh, toxic than what I was going through. So I decided to do do it, and so on the fourth of July in two thousand ten, you know, about a week later, I started on my protocol. Almost immediately, I was out of the wheelchair. I mean, it, within that month, uh, within a couple weeks, because the fourth of July and. You know, I'd say a week before that month ended, I think I was out of that wheelchair. So you went from wheelchair to walking within a couple of weeks. Yeah, I was kind of weak. I wasn't in shape. I mean, I didn't have a lot of stamina, but I was there. Well, I want to know why. I've always yeah. wanted to know why. 
and it's always a good question, you know, why are you getting better? And start learning what, what's in these foods. Well, I found out chlorophyll is like a super multivitamin. And so it's not only a chelator, but it's also a super multivitamin, and it's a food. Mm -hmm. I was taking a lot of vitamins through the chlorophyll, and I, was, and I wasn't taking a lot of it, very little of it. But I also was getting um, the chelation properties of taking the poisons out of my body, which I believe at that time was mercury and and uh, uh, dioxin from the Agent Orange. And uh, I didn't find out too much later that they're, they're using it on the GMO foods. Um, as I got better, my hair started coming back and I was thinning on the front and I was going bald. I, at my age, I thought that was normal. It's mm. not normal. <laughs> I was great. That's not normal. Those are early warning signs of toxicity. Your hair and your, your skin and your nails um, all play a part into warning you that you have these health issues. If you ignore them like I was doing, um, you get sicker. Um, if you try to find things that will take it out, I, initially I tried to get the doctors to do lab tests on me, they wouldn't do them. I wanted to get a heavy metal blood test. It took me a good year to convince them to give me a heavy metal blood test. This is leading up to this, this story. Uh, so it wasn't something doctors are used to. They don't look at chelation as a therapy uh, regularly. They, they look at it as, as nothing. Unless you were heavily poisoned, and I was not. I was getting poisoned uh, with small amounts over a long period of time, and uh, it wasn't an obvious thing. Even though I was a Vietnam vet, they, they don't do the test on it because it costs, at that time, $2,500 to do a dioxin test on you. They don't do that test. You were there, you're poisoned. That's all they say. So they aren't doing the chelation and they aren't doing uh, uh, any, or they, at that time they even stopped the research when the Japanese had discovered that it worked as uh, to remove dioxin out of the blood of the rats that they tested. So it was kind of just slipped through the cracks, I guess. But Ke chelation slipped through the cracks? Chelation, yeah. Okay. I think that for a cure for Agent Orange, it's still, there's no cure as far as the VA is concerned, and uh, veterans are twice as likely to even get uh, Parkinson's and ALS, and it's because I believe from all these toxins that we're exposed to. About two weeks ago, I got a letter from the Marine Corps saying, if you were at Camp Lejeune, and I was, that you are service-connected because of the toxins they found in the water table there. I believe a lot of military bases are that way because these are World War II military base. I know Camp Lejeune was, and it's been going on at least since that time. And it's just the normal waste products that we dump in on the ground, and it, it rains and it washes it through, and it and and it's from the oils and the fuels and the the normal you know toxins that we don't didn't think anything of back then. It surprised me. Uh, when I got it. Uh, I'd been following it, but I didn't think they'd service connect it. I just was shocked. And they even service connected the civilians. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So it's it's yeah. we're learning. We're getting we're getting a little understanding of these toxins. Uh, I think it plays a big part in the food we eat today. So you mentioned you also had kidney failure. So were you able to overcome that as well? I, yes. Uh, believe it or not, uh, one day I went into the VA and uh, the doctor says, you're healthy. And I was looking pretty good. I was feeling pretty good. And I says, doc, one of my labs is a little high. I didn't think it was important. Um, come to find out it was very important because the next minute he says, you have stage three kidney failure. And I says to him immediately, I says, that doesn't sound healthy at all. <laughs> I says, how can that be? And he says, well, as you get older, and I says, and Vietnam vets are prone to have kidney failure. This is normal to him. He, he was talking like it was normal. He mm -hmm. said, this is normal. And I says, well, that doesn't sound right. I says, why don't you tell me about it at least so I'd know to, to look, mm -hmm. you know, to look. If you don't look, you're not going to find it. I didn't, I didn't find it right away. But there was some research that came out in Sri Lanka, which kind of found right away. And they were finding that a lot of the farmers were using Roundup on their rice crops. And the Roundup was causing them to go into kidney failure and have kidney cancer, except a small group of farmers that were drinking from a soft water spring. They didn't have any problems. They were using the Roundup. So they didn't figure it out right away, but then through their research, they found out that this glyphosate that's in the Roundup is a chelator. It's like chlorophyll is a chelator. So I was doing chlorophyll as a chelator, and I definitely was getting the, uh, the glyphosate in my diet because I was doing fruit juices at that time. A lot of them. 
I, I was up at stage three and a half, actually. He called it stage three, but I was every two tenths, he goes up a stage. Mm -hmm. And then you go on dialysis after four. Okay. So I was close. I looked for, after reading that, I couldn't figure out what to do. And I, being a builder, I kept having an inkling that, oh, soft water, soft water, you know, kind of mm -hmm. soft water. And I, I was reading a blog one day and uh, this was probably almost uh, not quite 11 months after I had found out this diagnosis and I was due to go in for another lab test. So this blog they were talking about, this guy worked at a dialysis, dialysis center and he, they used bicarbonate soda and water in the water solution for a dialysis. And he thought, well, what if I drink this stuff? Because it's just baking soda. Sure. We, it's one of our foods. So I said, well, I got nothing to lose. I'm going to try it. So I decided to have a glass. Um, he got over his. I had a glass in the morning, a glass in the evening of, I think I was using uh, a plastic teaspoon in a, in a large glass of water. And I drink it down one in the morning, one in the evening. For seven days I did this. And I was due to go in 10 days later. So I stopped after seven days and I waited, you know, the, uh, three more days and I went in for my appointment and had my lab test done. I went from stage three to stage one in seven days. Really? That's what yeah, I told my doctor, incredible. a new doctor. And I had a new doctor and she says, that's impossible. And uh, I said, well, look at my labs. You know, you have, you, you, you can track my labs. I didn't know what those labs meant prior to this, uh, but I, she looked at the lab and she says, you're right. How did you do that? And I said, well, I did uh, uh, organic uh, dialysis. It's, what's that? And I said, well, I, did, I drank the same solution they use in dialysis. I said, the baking soda and water. I had a glass in the morning, glass in the evening, and uh, I said, we used to use that as Alka-Seltzer, you know, uh, to, for upset stomachs. But uh, she didn't believe me at first, and I, but I said, well, my labs show it, and but I stopped there. I just did it there and I was down to, you know, stage one. I didn't think it'd be a big deal. I went in for my labs this year, uh, beginning of this year, and uh, it was back up. Because you had stopped doing it. I stopped doing drink? it completely uh -huh. and I wanted to see what had happened. And I wasn't eating a lot of uh, uh, high fructose corn syrup in my, uh, uh, but I was doing my chlorophyll still, so it's a chelator. That was one of the side effects, the only negative one I found. So I said, okay, so that makes sense. I wanted to see what it would do. And my bags underneath my eyes were increasing. I was getting puffier on their eyes in the morning. It would show up uh, more readily. That's one of the signs of it. So I figured it was gone up, but I didn't expect it to go up as high as it was before. So just recently, this is this new stuff that I just did. I, I forgot about it. And I, and I was due to go to another test with creatinine levels. So like two days before I drank, uh, I think three or four glasses of this stuff. I didn't have enough time to do much of it. And it went down one whole stage just for those three glasses of, uh, of baking soda and water. Just in three glasses, I think is all I had. And maybe yeah. four, but I think it was only three. I dropped a whole stage uh, on my lab test. So food research is a very broad area. What are some things that people can do to start? Well, the chlorophyll was the first thing that I did, uh, but there's lots more things that I did that I, I call superfoods. If you are relatively healthy, um, you want to eat organic and don't be afraid to eat green vegetables. And the better ones are kale and spinach, all the dark green vegetables. So does eating organic remove a lot of those, um, those that risk of toxins? You're going to get a lot less toxins, but I don't think you're going to eliminate them all. Uh, because of the, if you're eating, if you're eating green vegetables, you're going to, you know, I know broccoli is really good because it's also prebiotic. Mm -hmm. And prebiotics are like uh, garlic and onion and like uh, uh, broccoli. They have like the sulfurs in them and stuff like that. It helps with starting that digestive uh, enzymes. Fermented foods are probiotics that help. That's, that's get your immune system jump started. But what you'll find with this organic, it's it, it's it's kind of determined uh, uh, by who who grows it and how honest they are. The only way you're gonna uh, be for sure is if you grow it yourself, and that's pure. One of the main things I do that a lot of people don't take into account, but a lot of chefs like to use it, is sea salt. Mm -hmm. 
Sea salt gives you a lot of those salts that you need, but it also gives you these trace minerals that you don't need a lot of that Dr. Joel Wallace talks about. Mm -hmm. The sea salt is really, but they bleach it all now. If you go to the store, it's all white. Mm -hmm. That's not the kind you need. What are some helpful resources that you found as you've gone through this food research journey? I have a couple of books that I've used for references for healing. And there's a, uh, one written by uh, Phyllis Spock and her, her uh, ex-husband, uh, the first one I got a hold of, and I think they have a fifth edition out now, so it's they've updated it a number of times. It's called Prescription for Nutritional Healing. And she wrote another book, I think it's even better, it's a Prescription for Herbal Healing. I had read a book called Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and I believe it's a very important book because the, the man who wrote it, Joel Wallach, he um, he believes we, our bodies are starved for nutrients. In other words, even the food we eat, he believes, come from depleted soils. That's not any GMOs involved. And he believes that these, uh, uh, you know, fre uh, fresh food that we eat is not always uh, uh, nutrient rich. A lot of these doctors were dying at a very young age just after they were finishing their residency from the stress of their job of learning to be doctors. And they were dying from deficiencies, basically, they found out. And he, one of the big ones he believes on, and I, I believe it too, is selenium. It's a very inexpensive nutrient, but when we get gray hair, that's a deficiency in selenium. Really? It's also a deficiency in colloidal copper. Um, what colloidal copper is, is it's, it's water soluble, it's plant-based copper. It's not like sucking on a penny and hoping you're gonna get your <laughs> copper supply. It's more to do with, uh, um, when the plant absorbs it out of the ground, it converts it and helps kind of break, start breaking it down for our body to absorb more readily. And, but if you look for the warning signs and learn to read your body, look at your fingernails, look at your hair, look at the gray hair, these are things that you don't have to have as you get older. It, it's more, if you have it, it's usually you're deficient. I mean, when we get older, you see older people that are pale, they're real gray or white hair. Uh, it's because they are, they're, they're already, they're so deficient in their nutritional uh, state that they are taking the nutrition out of, the, out of their bones. And then their bones get brittle, and then they fall and break a hip, or, and then they die because they start, that's when they start going into uh, giving them heavy pain pills, uh, you know, the medication, and that's usually what puts them, puts them down is, is the, the pain pills, you know. I know with my mother it was that way. I believe that uh, you should supplement targeted uh, uh, to the health problem that you have. Um, this prescription for nutritional healing by Phyllis Bach or a prescription for organic healing would be good books to re refer to and there's lots of others out there. You'll find lots of research that goes into targeted nutritional supplementation for health issues. And so what does the expression positive food experiences mean to you? <laughs> Food is medicine. Um, if you target your food to your health problem, and like I said, the prescription for nutritional healing or herbal healing would be a good starting point. Uh, supplement nutrition where you're weak in that area. You know, because in other words, in the nutritional healing, they talk about uh, uh, nutrition that's targeted to your health condition. In other words, it's separated out by health conditions or health issues. So how do you feel you've had positive food experiences in doing all of this food research? Well, almost everything I've studied, it all goes back to food. They're all food. I mean, they're more concentrated forms that I took because I was real sick. But I believe if you do your basic uh, uh, green vegetables and fruits, um, you're going to have probably no colon cancer. If you do... Um, uh, something like salmon and stuff, you're probably not going to have a lot of joint pain and you're not going to have too bad eyesight. That's the way to keep your eyes healthy. Um, uh, prevention is always a better choice than doing what I had to do. It's coming from uh, the other direction. I've always, I thought, ate fairly healthy, but I don't think we do. Healthy is, we understand it one way and it's really another way. And you'll find that as you have this health issue, uh, one health issue complements another health issue. In other words, the same vitamins seem to be taken for both. So if you're having a health problem, sometimes they're overlapping, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But if your health is 
deteriorating, you're not healthy like you were when you were younger, it's really probably because you need to do some chelation. So all this is, goes back to food again. It's how we do our foods. You know, some of the foods, if you do a good, uh, restore your, uh, your intestinal flora, which the dioxins and the glyphosates and the lead and the mercury, all that are defoliants. Even penicillin is a defoliant. It undermines our intestinal flora. This is our health. This is our immune system. About 80% of our immune system is in our gut. So if we can restore that, and that's one of the lessons I learned later on, but I was getting better without knowing about probiotics or prebiotics. Now I know a lot more about probiotics and prebiotics, yeah, but there even you can target your probiotics to help with your health. I believe it's a, one of the greatest tools we have right now I, is the internet. Now you got to be careful when you look on the internet because there's going to be people uh, like me talking about it. You Don't just believe what people say. Like I'm telling you, look it up and study it. Look at the research. Make sure you understand what's going on. I'm just going to give you clues. Hopefully you don't listen to uh, verbatim what I'm saying, but you study it and you learn for yourself what's right. Chuck, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a real eye-opener, and I hope that, that those, those watching at least can, can find a starting point and, and really discover health and food for themselves. I think if they, if they look for their own health problem and target their, their food to their health problem, food is so essential. Also, supplementation ties it in, ties it together. Those two things are going to turn them around almost immediately. It's not a long, drawn-out process. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Food Experience Unplugged video series. For more information, please visit our website at foodexperienceunplugged.com and be sure to follow us on social media. We look forward to seeing you on Food Experience Unplugged, where food, fun, and memories come together.